In my D&D campaign, while the players are roaming around, the only contact they have with the NPCs is more in a direct form. However, in most campaigns, the NPCs do linear stuff based on a couple of lines that were written at some point in time. Afterwards, if the campaign has advanced quite a bit, the NPCs cease to exist, not due to a fault of their own. What I've realized, and quite quickly, even though the city is populated, the NPCs wait for the PCs to provide their trade of adventures, making the non-player character somewhat static, similar to a MMO's world. All that he's missing is a yellow exclamation mark above their head. To combat that, you usually go back to the NPCs and write him back into the adventure. However, this comes possibly with a ton of re rights. I'm trying to change that, since it literally makes no sense, as it's supposed to be a living, breathing world. If you're planning to follow along, please keep in mind that this can ruin your already established campaign, and it will require more of a bullet point kind of storytelling. So what I'm saying is, it does not really work with railroads. Or it does if you want to add more randomness to them. Ultimately, it's going to be up to you. Let's put an end to the NPC stillness in the world and with your assistance we will make them move around a bit. My name is Chris, I'm a new DM and I'm always learning and currently at the beginning of my DMing journey. I started back in 2020 in June and as a birthday gift to myself I bought the Essentials Kit. However, very quickly amounting to loving the TTRPG world. Doing this will hopefully improve my skills and knowledges in being a DM. With the idea provided by me, myself and I, which I strongly recommend watching, I will be trying to make a living world and hopefully with your tips we will expand on it and improve it extensively. What made me do this? The PCs in my campaign, even though they received the quest a while back, tend to forget it. This will tie in with their story and will expand on the world. What's the campaign in setting? The campaign is homebrewed to some extent, however it does have some elements from the Lost Mines of Handalvar and the Dragon of Icepire Peak. On the latter it only has the dragon, mainly Cryovay. The setting is quite a simple one and it's a slightly modified Forgotten Realms setting. I do have some NPCs that were moved from their initial locations and some of the locations are somewhat not where they're supposed to be. You'll very quickly get to see the city of Daggerford. I'm still considering my own setting, I do have some ideas in the cooker However, I do like having a compendium of events that I can rely on and I do not have to create. What am I good at? Well, hopefully everything, but I cannot voice act or act even though I am trying. Any tips on this will be appreciated. As well, if you have any tips for me to keep the same demeanor for the NPCs would help greatly. What am I going to be using? I'll be mainly focusing on Foundry VT Team with several mods, the official supplements from the Wizard of the Coast loosely, mainly Xanatar's Guide of Everything, the Mythic Game Master Emulator for the beginning, however I'll expand the collection at the end of March when I will have some more books incoming to add to the randomness. What is the Mythic Game Master Emulator? The emulator does allow me to create any number of scenarios based on random question which makes sense depending on what is happening at the time. It is focused in yes or no question and I have to roll for the answer. Lower the number on the die, the higher the yes. How will this work? As a DM, I'm going to make my NPCs as a regular PC sheet and treat the other NPCs as NPCs. When another NPC at the time will become a PC, I will treat the previously PC back as an NPC. Who's to say the NPC after taking so much time in inquiring about some help will not attempt to actually do the thing requested? D&D occurs in a quite fantastical world. Who's to say nothing fantastical happens to an NPC? What can you do to help? Well, several things. Firstly, tips, tricks and supplements to review and probably implement. For me, to be a better player as well, a DM. You can also create your own NPC. Be advised, even if it's a fantastical world, most people go with tragic backstory. <laughs> this does not necessarily mean that the NPC had a tough life. What I would request from the people to, is to use names that belong in fantasy settings. Take into account in this scenario, I will not disregard names that come from popular media. A good example will be Frodo or Lancelot. How long will there be between the episodes? I honestly do not know. Depending mainly on how liked it is, probably expect one every week, every two weeks. I'm not quite sure yet. 
or if no response by the general public, I will stop the series quite early in its tracks. However, I am at the time quite invested. For this episode I'm going to have one of the NPCs created by one of my Twitch followers. You know who you are. Sorry for startling you. Aidan, the town guard. Clever character, however not the strongest, he mainly fights with his head, not with his brawn. Our plot thread for the setup is that Dars, one of the caravan's campground tenders, he is heading towards the blacksmith to repair some horseshoes. Due to recent one-sided war that has started, there is some screening for the people that come in and out of town. Aiden, an old grizzle ex-soldier who is currently in station as one of the town's guards, assisting with the screening process. He approaches Dars and says, good morning friend to the blacksmith and he points to the horseshoes that Dars is carrying. Dars, with a quick smile, answers, indeed, we have a couple of horseshoes to set up in the evening. My first question for the GM emulators was, is Dars carrying any contraband? I decided that was somewhat of an unlikely event, however the roll was 25 on the cast table 5 which stated that it was. Follow up question was this time for D&D. How hidden was the contraband that Dars was carrying? I roll competing slate of hand versus a perception check. Aiden quickly study him from head to toe. Being somewhat tired since his shift has just ended and a replacement has come to take his place. He asked Dars, mind if I join you for a walk? I'm heading home and if you don't mind the company, I'd be happy to walk with you. Dars very briefly put a smile on his face and attempted to be welcoming. But of course, please do join me, a small chit chat in this tired weather will be perfect. The two made their way towards the blacksmith. I decided the plot thread is getting close to its end or is being modified, however I decided to roll a random event. I've rolled a 3, a 14 and a 35 while I consider enough times has passed. In the Lord Protector's office, Jana Shendrel has finished signing a decree referencing that the military lockdown screening is no longer in effect. However, the guards will be in high alert. I follow this with a question. Does Aidan follow Dars due to him being suspected of carrying any contraband and if so, is he trying to pull Dars' tongue? I did consider that was a very likely scenario and the roll was a 60 on the chaos table 5 which means it's a definite yes. All things considered, him being an ex-military and also seeing several people coming in and out of town at different times of day, he would quickly figure out that Dars is hiding something. Dars, you know you won't get in trouble, tell me what's going on. We've known each other for a while now and I won't rat you out. However, I won't be able to protect you if you get caught. To find out how the conversation advances, I've used a contest persuasion. For those who don't know, I've rolled on both characters the persuasion skills and Aiden won the persuasion check. Dars very briefly responded. Um, you know, the time you had my back when I was imprisoned in Waterdeep made me trust you. So with the lockdown, I was given as payment this blueprint by one of the caravaneers. Dars hands the blueprint to Aiden and adds, I was hoping to get some coin for it from the blacksmith. Or if he doesn't want it, try to sell it at the Undervolt. Dars, Aiden states, you shouldn't really be involved with the Undervolt folk. I've heard scenarios where they sell souls for coppers. Coppers, I tell you. Can you actually tell me what this is? Hmm. I think it's somewhat of a firearm, like the cannons we have up on the walls, but somewhat on a more portable idea. At this moment, I decided that they're in the front of the blacksmith and I wanted them to finish the chat. Aiden hands the blueprint back and states, hmm, under regular circumstances, I would confiscate this, but at this time, I'll let you do what you think is best. If you want to listen to me, everything is going to be fine. But if you don't, there will most likely be dire consequences for all of us. Turn this to Gianna, the Lord Protector. It will greatly help the guards and the military that is currently understaffed and under-equipped. But with this piece of advice, I will let you be. Have a good morning, friend. And if you return to the caravan grounds, also have an easy shift today. Dars nods. As he attempted to enter the blacksmith store, at this point I've rolled another event. First roll was 53. Close the thread. 
which was somewhat convenient. But here comes the how. Second roll was 35 and 59 randomness. Hmm. Aiden from the distance is running back, quickly shouting. Oh yeah, I actually forgot to tell you. I think Gundren the blacksmith might not be in town today. He left quite early in the morning. Something about his wife. I'm unsure he's going to be on for the day. I do apologize, but it most likely slipped my mind. Must be the age catching up to me. A note on the blacksmith door confirms the statement in a very blocky letters, as it simply states, we're not open on the 5th of Lethal. Dars looks at Aiden, somewhat frustrated. Friend, if you wanted to talk, we could have talked at the gate. I must be going now. And he waves at Aiden, and in return he waves back. Dars, making its way back to the campground, is thinking what to do with the blueprint he currently has in his possession. 